be to introduce Arnie Duncan, uh, who became the Secretary of Education on January 20th, 2009. Prior to his appointment uh, as Secretary, he was the CEO of the Chicago Public Schools, of which I consider myself a proud alumnus. Uh, and uh, uh, he held that title from 2001 to 2008, making him the longest serving big city superintendent in the country, which tells you something about how hard that job is, given the, sh the short half-life of uh, most of your peers. Uh, as superintendent, he launched the Chicago Public Schools Community Schools Initiative, a public-private effort to increase the number of community schools in Chicago. Uh, Arnie's created an office of extended, uh, also created an office of extended learning opportunities to help support community school development. By 2008, there were 150 uh, community schools in Chicago, about a quarter of the total uh, number of schools there. Uh, as secretary, he continues to support the expansion of community schools, as well as a major uh, Obama initiative to create promised neighborhoods based on Harlem's uh, ch uh, children's zone model across the country. Uh, I want to start uh, by asking you, Arnie, a question, which is we've focused uh, over the past probably two decades on a lot uh, on education reform from uh, from uh, uh, accountability, testing, uh, high schools, teacher effectiveness, charter schools, etc. The UK put a lot of effort, uh, as uh, Tony Blair just mentioned, in this concept of rooting uh, extended schools as part of a, a community-based uh, effort to really push education reform uh, uh, forward. I think if you, we just did this uh, report on uh, community schools in the US, here it still seems more like an experiment, like it's one more thing on the list. How central is it to actually achieving the range of, uh, of education reform uh, efforts that you're trying to do with Race to the Top and everything else? I think they're absolutely critical. First, I'm going to say we learned so much from what you guys did. It's pretty remarkable, uh, the leadership that you provide, Mr. Prime Minister. Michael Barber's been someone I've listened to very, very closely. And, um, these things are not in conflict. Um, we need high standards. We need sort of national assessments. These guys have had it. We haven't done that. We have 48 states working hard on that. And we need our schools, every single school, to be open much longer hours and serving the community. And these things aren't in conflict. And I would argue that we have to move very aggressively to the Prime Minister's point and be bold in all of these areas. Um, schools that are open six hours a day, five days a week, nine months out of the year, don't meet anyone's needs. Anymore. They don't meet middle-class families' needs. They don't meet single moms' needs. They don't meet the needs of children who come from no parent homes. Our schools have to be open much longer hours with a wide variety of after-school activities for children and for parents. And when children learn as, uh, and families learn together and the schools are part of the community, great things happen for children. Rich, poor, black, white, Latino, doesn't matter. When schools are islands from the community, when they're separated from the community, children suffer. And so I think we have to move with a huge sense of urgency in all of these areas. And I will tell you, uh, we did lots of things in Chicago that were tough and controversial and hard. Our movement to get 150 community schools had no natural enemies. Everybody was on board with it. This is the one area where you're not going to, you know, where everyone benefits. Teachers benefit, children benefit, families benefit, schools ultimately benefit. And uh, this is one we just have to, uh, to push extraordinarily hard. So not in conflict or central to reform? Both. Not in conflict and central to reform. Both. Uh, Mr. Blair, what, uh, it, 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 you were loading a lot onto the existing leadership of schools, who probably, as leaders in, in our own schools, feel to some extent the leader today in terms of the tough job that they have. How did you buy in the leadership uh, in those schools to ask them to do more? Uh, obviously, there were some financial incentive to do that, but but what, what was your strategy with respect particularly to principals and teachers? Well, I'm not sure we always got the strategy right, to be frank, but I, I, I mean, we invested a massive amount in schools and in teachers and in teachers' pay and all of that. Um, I actually, though, came to the conclusion in the end that there was, you had to be very careful of this trade-off between what you impose from the center and what you, you and this is why structure is important, because, you see, you can't just say to the school, just get on with it, okay? And, and the very reason you've got a government with a policy is because you can't just say, get on with it. It doesn't matter how bad it is, you've got to put up with it. On the other hand, I think if you create the right structure, then it, it's a lot easier for the government to be more strategic in the direction it's giving and to let the school then take some critical decisions itself. So